Welcome to this video lecture. We are continuing our discussion on machine learning using Python and Scikit-learn. We're going to be talking about ridge regression this time, and I'm going to go a little faster in this video because ridge regression is very similar to the lasso algorithm. So they, actually the key difference between ridge regression and the lasso algorithm is that this penalty term that provides the regularization that essentially tries to enforce in this optimization problem uh, a simpler model. Instead of using the L1 norm, we're going to use the L2 norm. So instead of taking the sum of the absolute value of our model parameters, now we are going to square those model parameters. So we still have an objective function. Uh, we still have this sum of squared error term that we hope to minimize. And we want to balance that out with this L2 norm. So this is a penalty term that penalizes having a lot of features in our model. So specifically, we want to try and force some of the statistically insignificant model parameters as close to zero as we can so that we know that we can omit those from our model without losing a lot on uh, accuracy here. Uh, this still has the same tuning parameter to balance our weighting between model precision over here and then model simplicity over here. So ideally, uh, we still have the same form of the model. We could just have all different kinds of features or different combinations or uh, permutations of our input variables, x1, x2, x3, what have you. Um, but this is going to help us, this ridge regression algorithm is going to help us regularize our model to keep it simpler. So I've got a Jupyter Notebook going again. Um, we just made some very simple changes to our last Jupyter Notebook. And specifically, instead of importing the lasso algorithm, now we're going to import the ridge regression algorithm, along with all the other tools that we are going to need. Import our data here. Uh, we'll glance at these plots again. Uh, if we're looking at just a single variant graphical analysis, we see that y versus x1 shows probably an overall linear relationship between y and x1, uh, but a lot of variance in the data. Between y and x2, we see this nonlinear relationship. Um, that is a seems like a pretty clear relationship. Again, a lot of variance. We hope to eliminate a lot of that variance by looking at a multivariate model. So we can look at how these different combinations of our inputs impact uh, the overall output or the overall y value. And then again, we did not detect much of a relationship between y and x3. Just a whole lot of variance here, but there, there may be something going on here that we don't understand. Uh, so I'm going to do this data pre-processing again, which will produce all the various permutations of our model inputs uh, as a polynomial up to degree 2. We're going to separate our data into training data and testing data using a ratio of 20% testing data. And then we're going to run the algorithm here using ridge regression with, again, I'm going to use an alpha of 0 0.5. And just know that I've done a little bit of tuning and playing around with this on my own offline. So we're going to run the ridge regression. We're going to evaluate our model. Uh, we, we have error. So our mean absolute error of our training data is 7.34. Our testing data, it is higher than that. Again, this is typical because the testing data is not included in the training data set but you want to hold out that testing data to validate your model and make sure that it works even on data that the algorithm was not exposed to when it was fitting. We see a similar trend, our, a pretty high R squared in our training data of 0.975. Um, our testing data is not as good, but still this is a good quality model where we are explaining 96% of the variance through this model. And so if you don't get what I'm saying by the variance, Notice how, uh, how widespread this data is when we're looking at a single variable, how widespread this is. We want to see that data collapse down, uh, especially in our parity plot, and see a lot less noise. So that means we're doing a better job of explaining the variance. All right, I'm going to run this uh, plotting algorithm to look at our, how our training and testing, uh, how we perform, how our model performs in terms of training data and testing data. And again, we're seeing a lot of really good alignment with our y equals x line, or this 45 degree line here, looking at what our model predicts on the y axis and what the actual data shows on the x axis. Again, this is a, a pretty good model. Um, we now want to look at how well we were able to simplify or regularize our model. So I'm going to go ahead and plot now our model coefficients. Just using this command, when we fit our model, we created this object called model underscore one. And now we can go and extract the coefficients here. 
and plot them on a bar graph. So as you can see, um, this confirms a lot of our, uh, our analysis when we were looking at this single variate graph. So we see that there is this very strong linear relationship between y and x1. It has this large coefficient. Uh, we do also see a smaller dependence on from y on x3, and this is actually, when I generated this data set, there actually is a very slight linear relationship between y and x3. It's much harder to tell, there's more variance. Um, but actually, what our, what our features tell us, so we see that x2 linear relationship is not important, neither is x1 squared or x1 times x2. We see this relationship between x1 and x3 um, may be significant. More importantly though is this x2 times x3. This is looking like it is a statistically important feature of our model, as is x2 squared. And so while that coefficient for x2 squared is smaller, um, I do think that's st statistically important. Notice we do want some kind of a relationship between y and x2 in there. So another thing looking at the, uh, the feature importance, this x2 times x3 relationship, this bilinear relationship, does look like it's important. And actually you can see that maybe that is something that's happening between y and x3 is that um, we do see the maximum value here of y kind of growing linearly. So I think it's really growing as a function of x2 and x3. So what this ridge regression algorithm has done is it's helped us to get a much simpler model where we may only need maybe these top four parameters. So x1, x3, x2 squared, and then x2 times x3. And the others seem less significant and maybe we could drop those. But again, there is a, a uh, a need to kind of iterate here. So what I would recommend doing would be um, removing x2, x1 squared, and x1 times x2, and possibly these others as features, and then refitting. And ultimately, I think you want to refit a model where alpha is zero and you have no penalty term. So you use that penalty term to identify which features are important. And then once you've realized which features are important, you get rid of those that are not important, and then I would recommend refitting with ordinary least squares, which is the same as ridge regression with alpha set to zero. And then one final thought is that if you want to go and extract what your model actually is at the end of this, you can run, you can extract the coefficients using this command that tells you all the different coefficients, and then you can extract the model intercept here. And then the coefficients here would line up with uh, when you when you do this pre-processing and you do these polynomial combinations, the, the model coefficients should line up with all of these features on a one-to-one -one basis.